last week, leaked intelligence about the war in Ukraine began to appear on social media. Briefing slides prepared by the U.S. government began to show up, among other places, on Twitter. And the slides show that this is, in fact, not Ukraine's war. It's our war. The United States is a direct combatant in a war against Russia. As we speak, American soldiers are fighting Russian soldiers. So this is not a regional conflict in Eastern Europe. This is a hot war between the two primary nuclear superpowers on Earth. And yet this war has never been formally declared. It has not been authorized by Congress. And for that reason, this war is a violation of American law. It is a crime. The second thing we learn from these slides is that despite direct U.S. involvement, Ukraine is in fact losing the war. Seven Ukrainians are being killed for every Russian. Ukrainian air defenses have been utterly degraded. Ukraine is losing. The Biden administration is perfectly aware of this. They're panicked about it, but they have lied about this fact to the public. Just two weeks ago, for example, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin told the U.S. Senate that Russian military power is, quote, waning. In other words, Russia is losing the war. That was a lie. He knew it was when he said it, but he repeated it in congressional testimony. That is a crime. But Lloyd Austin has not been arrested for committing that crime. Instead, the only man who has been taken into custody, or likely ever will be, is a 21-year-old Massachusetts Air National Guardsman who leaked the slides that showed that Lloyd Austin was lying. He revealed the crimes, therefore he's the criminal. That's how Washington works. Telling the truth is the only real sin. As we made clear last week, if China threatens our sovereignty, we will act to protect our country, and we did. Who is threatening whose sovereignty? Let's take a quick look at the last 70 or so years. During the Korean War, American bombs crossed over the Korea-China border. This led to China's involvement in the Korean War as the American invasion threatened their sovereignty. From November 1950 to February 1951, Dang Dong's Sino-Korean Friendship Bridge was bombed by the US. As a result of the Korean War, the US sent the Navy to Taiwan, effectively putting it under American protection. Eisenhower lifted the blockade later that year, prompting the first Taiwan Straits crisis in 1954. The US Joint Chiefs of Staff recommended Chiang Kai-shek's government to use nuclear weapons against the People's Republic of China. The same year, the US signed the Sino-American Mutual Defense Treaty with the Nationalists to defend the Nationalists on Taiwan from PRC. In 1955, the US threatened a nuclear attack on China and Congress pledged to support Taiwan. The second Taiwan Straits crisis occurred three years later when the US sent military support to Taiwan and further discussed using nuclear weapons against mainland China. In 1979, in a period of detente, the US granted China full diplomatic relations, acknowledged the One China Principle, but Congress later passed the Taiwan Relations Act, which required Washington to provide arms to Taiwan, as well as normalizing commercial and cultural relations. In 1982, Reagan similarly pledged not to mediate between Taiwan and China, but did not stop arms sales to Taipei. In 1999, NATO bombed the Chinese embassy in Belgrade. The US and NATO apologized for what they claimed was an accident in their wider campaign in Yugoslavia. China affirmed that it was out of the NATO targeting regime. Two years later, a US spy plane flew over the South China Sea, colliding with a Chinese intercepted jet and making an emergency landing on Chinese territory. Last year, a US warship entered the South China Sea, and just days ago, the US and Marine Corps held drills in the South China Sea involving ships and aircraft. The US frequently and deliberately enters the South China Sea to challenge China's territorial claims. Since April 2021, almost $3 billion in arms have been sold to Taiwan. The US has been waging a war on China for decades, challenging its sovereignty and defying the very agreements it's made with China. We can stop moving towards a war when
hope that things start to stop. It's that nearly every war that has started in the past 50 years has been a result of media lies. 